We give you greetings today in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a joy, for this is the day the Lord has made, and I am going to rejoice and be glad in it. And we're our, our special guest today is no doubt going to rejoice with us. Uh, we have with us Brother Albert Ramirez, and uh, he's going to be sharing some good things. And oh, surprise of surprises. Uh, before I tell you what I'm doing and, and what why I'm here and not Brother Walter Zagrabitz, I'll tell you in a moment. But first, get your phone or whatever you, you are using to watch and, and come to the part where you hit <laughs> share. Because as you hit share, I believe you're doing the will of God because you are wanting to share the word of God and to share what we are going to share because I know that Brother Albert is going to be led by the Spirit of God and whatever he says, I know it's going to be the leading of the Spirit of the Lord. Now just hit that share button and uh, you will see that you will be blessed because you are, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm trying to talk and, and hit my share button. I just did that. And I am Tony Abram, missionary evangelist Tony Abram. And I am filling in as host again today. And uh, we may see a pop in with Brother Walter Zagravich, but uh, they were flying, I think, all night and to get home. And, and they may still, and I hope they are, uh, as much as I like to see them come on the broadcast. Uh, I hope they're resting and, and recuperating and getting ready for ministry in Cuba and then on to the Ukraine. Uh, shortly, in a few days, they're going to be uh, doing that. And uh, the last trip to Cuba, uh, Brother Albert was there, and God used him in a wonderful way. Uh, his Spanish is a little better than mine. <laughs> he even caught there without an interpreter and uh, in some of his meetings, and he had to depend on the Lord and and with his Spanish, and he and God blessed and poured out his spirit. But anyways, this is Global Vision Ministries, uh, and we are we are substituting, or I'm substituting as host today. Uh, Brother Albert is guest, and uh, we have him almost every week, at least once. And and what a joy it is to see Albert and uh, to hear from him and. You know why we like to hear from him? Because he hears from God. And I, I, you say, well, he reads the Bible. Yes, but the Spirit of God takes that word and puts it in his heart and in his mind and uses him. What a blessing he has been in different parts of the world. And, uh, and, he, and he has his own ministry. And uh, just because he joins here, like myself, we have our own ministries, but we believe in global vision and what it is doing. And we'll be talking a little more about that, Walter and Nina, a little bit later. But uh, Al Albert, you've been a friend of my, ours for a number of years, you and your dear wife. And uh, we greet you and thank you for coming on the, on the broadcast today. We're on Facebook and, and uh, of course, on all these other platforms and and it, literally, we're reaching the whole world. I, I know that in some of the broadcasts, we, I, I watch some of the things that come in. I, I'm, I don't have the ability to see all the comments, but uh, till later. But, uh, praise the Lord. It's nice to see him popping in from, from Africa, from Kenya, from Finland, from Japan, from China, and uh, various parts, Cuba, of course. And... Uh, and, but it's wonderful to have you. And here, I see you're uh, looking at the background uh, of that beautiful scene there. Uh, my, my books are still there, but uh, you're there. And give us greetings and whatever you might have on your heart you'd like to help kick off this broadcast today. 
Amen. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to to greet to minister with you, Tony. As we've done in the past many times, and uh, it's always fun. <laughs> it's, it's always fun. It's, it's always it's fun to 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 do what God has called you to do. You know, it, yeah. In the beginning, when I first got started, I remember it was, uh, you know, was, you know, you're always trying to do the perfect thing, trying to be perfect, trying to be. Uh, you know, a good minister and, and things like that, which we are. I'm not saying we're perfect, but we are in Christ, in him. Our spirits are perfect in him, but we're all growing. And, and we think, and I thank God for the word of God that it transforms us. That's why it says to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the word of God does that. And he does that through the Holy Spirit, giving us revelation of how we should walk, how we should think and how we should act in this world. And, uh, that the that that image to me is Christ. You know, we we're, we're to be. It talks about that in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, verse thirteen. We're to be conformed to Romans eight twenty seven. I think it is uh, eight twenty nine, maybe. But it's we're supposed to be. We were preordained to, to be conformed to the image of Christ, and that's that says a lot in itself. You know, as far as his character, um, you know, as far as the things that he did. Uh, I was just reading in the twelfth chapter of John that. That you know we're, we're you know we're, it's the word of God that that's, that's going to change us and into His image and it's going to uh, and unless that word and which is always related to a seed a lot of times in the Bible unless that seed fall to the ground and die that means we die to ourselves we're we're kind of it kind of relates that seed to us and if we when we die to ourselves and our own selfishness uh, our own desires and our own our own ways, then then we can't produce life, you know. But we do produce life, and we produce many more seeds, which means to me more lives for Christ, more lives working for God in His kingdom, and and uh, more people sharing the gospel. So, yeah, uh, that's what happens when we get born again. We die to ourselves, you know. We begin to grow. We begin to to uh, multiply, you know. And I always like to I like to. I remember hearing this saying from a preacher and he said, he showed an apple. He said, what, what do I have here? And he, and everybody says an apple. He says, so what's, what's, what's the, the truth? What that I have here? And everybody goes an apple, but he says, no, he said, what the fact is I have an apple. That's a fact, but facts are always subject to change. He said, but when in truth, I have an orchard. And, and orchards and more orchards. He goes, because you take one seed from that apple, you plant it in the ground, grows another tree full of apples, full of seeds, and those fall to the ground. They can produce more and more trees, more seeds, more apples. Well, that's that's what that's what the word of God does to us. It, when we die to ourselves and we change and get transformed by the word of God and by the Holy Spirit, and of course, our yielding to our our own selves dying to ourselves in our in our own ways, then we can produce more seeds. You know, we produce more more apples, <laughs> and we produce more seeds that 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 share the gospel. And that's that's what I hope we do, and that's what I believe that we do when we share the gospel in different nations. And I'm sure, and I you know, and I've been I've ministered behind you in a lot of times when I've come in and ministered in different places. Um, different countries behind you, you know, after you've been there and I can see the fruit that you're producing. I see the other seeds that you're producing. And that's, that's what happens when, when we allow the word of God and the Holy spirit into our lives. And we make it part of our lives is we die to ourselves and more and more of Christ appears more when Christ appears, then there's more multiplication all the time in, in our lives and through our lives. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, you, when I look at you, Albert, I realize that uh, you have more than one calling. I've, I've seen you uh, moving in, in different callings. Now, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 4 that uh, there, there are uh, five gifts uh, given to the church. Mm -hmm. And the church is the whole body of Christ. That's believers everywhere. Mm -hmm. I've seen you move in the, in, <laughs> in the ministry of the prophet which is a tremendous ministry. I've seen you move in the ministry uh, of a teacher. 
Uh, and I know you do move in the ministry as a pastor, but uh, what I like best is your ministry as an evangelist, maybe because uh, that is, seems to be the still the main point of um, the calling I feel in my spirit. And, mm -hmm. and do you remember, uh, and I, I'm sure most folks that are watching, uh, they probably know the story or the <laughs> parable that Jesus told about a sower went forth to sow. Well, you know, the ministry of an evangelist, uh, when he is sowing, the, he, he throws it everywhere. I throw it everywhere. <laughs> Every opportunity I get, I get in the meeting. You know, we've been in, we've been in large meetings and, and uh, uh, with many thousands of people. And wh when I'm out there, I'm, I'm giving that seed. I don't care you know, it, it, what they might be. They could be atheists uh, uh, to... Uh, the, the most God-fearing and serving uh, Christian there is, I like throwing the seed out, the word of God. And mm -hmm. I know that a lot of it falls along the wayside. And uh, some bears fruit, but some doesn't. But I like what you said uh, just now uh, about the apple seed. You know, from mm -hmm. that one seed, it can produce a tree. And then that tree can produce so many more trees it, it, and it, it, it keeps growing and growing. And that's how it should be in, in, with, with Christians. I'm I, I think it was Moody. I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. But uh, a question was asked to him uh, about being a Christian. And he, his answer was, when you are saved, it's not to be selfish and just keep it for yourself. Um, Jesus told, except uh, a grain of uh, seed, uh, a wheat be planted in the ground. It, it lives alone. But if it's planted, it multiplies. And God wants us to be uh, multipliers. He wants us to sh share Amen. that which God has given us. And it can multiply. And eventually, you might have to wait a little bit. Uh, but you, mm -hmm. an orchard will come. Uh, I, I'm thinking, I, I give my this illustration about my mom all the time. Mom was the first one. She was saved and healed under Catherine Coleman's ministry back in either 48 or 49, and, uh, 1948 or 1949. And uh, she, she was the first believer in our mm -hmm. uh, immediate family for sure. And she prayed. And it took her a long time, but she kept planting that seed. Every and I remember mom would like to give her testimony and she'd like to share uh, the gospel. I remember even the last few months before she passed away, uh, she was in a, uh, in a nursing home because they had cut her toe off by accident and so forth. And, and uh, but anyways, even prior to that, she, those few months she was in that, in that uh, uh, assisted living. And uh, she she had all these, she came in there one day, there must have been about 20 wheel people on a wheelchair. She had them all <laughs> there in a circle and she was leading them uh, uh, with the, and teaching them the word of God and singing songs and so forth. And I thought, mom, even in her old age, she was bearing fruit and, and our life, we are saved. Yes. Praise the Lord. Our name's written in the book of life, but we are saved to serve and we serve by spreading the gospel. And I thank God that uh, you uh, and, and brethren like you are sharing the word of God, that those that gifting that God has given you, uh, you haven't hidden it under a bushel, but you like many of, but, I was going to say many of God's people uh, are shining, are being a light, but I'm ashamed to say, I'm sorry to say, there are many that are hiding under the bushel and they, and, and, and God wants you to be a lamp, not a candle under a bushel basket. Mm -hmm. He wants to use you for his honor and his glory. Well, anyways, it took mom 21 years, but eventually Everybody on the family was saved, and uh, my dad was the last one. He, and uh, but the last year or two before he died, 
Oh, how he lived for the Lord and how he loved the Lord. I guess he was hearing it from mom for all those years. He had to, he knew the <laughs> word, but he, ne but he never had exercised by receiving Christ as Savior, Lord and Master. Praise the Lord. And by the way, Albert, now how did you come to the Lord? I don't know if I ever asked you that. I at least I can't remember. Well, that's 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 a long uh, story in itself. I mean, I was a bad boy, you know, doing a lot of drugs and things, and dealing drugs and drinking and partying and everything else. And I remember I met my wife. Uh, we were just you know seeing each other at the time, and um, uh, my mother-in-law was got born again. She was Catholic, and then she got born again. And I remember her telling me. One time I went over there to visit her with, with my wife. Now we weren't married at the time, but my wife now. And I remember we went when we went over to her house. She goes, uh, you know, I was talking, and of course, you know, out of the buns of the heart, the mouth speaks. And now the buns of my heart at that time was not good. So I mean, I was talking. So she goes, you know, Albert. She goes, you need Jesus in your life. And I said, uh, you know, this is this is how funny God is. And I said, Irene, I go. I'm Catholic. I'm never going to be a Christian. So don't, she goes, says, I'm going to pray for you. And I said, well, I'm never going to be a Christian. So don't pray for me. I said, I'm, I'm Catholic. Okay. And I wasn't, a, I wasn't a good Catholic. I was like a mafia Catholic. You kill a guy one weekend and then repent on, uh, on Friday, <laughs> go to, go to confession on Saturday, you know, but anyway, so, you know, I, I told her that she goes, I'm going to fast and pray for you three days. Well, she did. And oh my God, I was sitting there one time smoking. I'm going to be honest. I smoked a marijuana joint that I was dealing in some cocaine and drinking a beer. And I was happy. <laughs> I was happy with the, with the, the excitement of the world that I was living and everything else. And <laughs> my mother-in-law, uh, she was fast and praying. And that's, and that, um, and, and, and just suddenly something came on me. It literally felt like, you would take a silk uh, scarf or something, just drop it over someone. That's how I felt it. And it wasn't good. It was a demonic spirit. And, and people don't realize this, that when, even though, and my mom was praying, my mother was praying, she was Catholic, but God hears Catholic people's prayers. God hears the heart is what he hears. <laughs> and of course, you know, mother loves her son. So my mother was praying for me. I went to Vietnam and my mom was praying for me. That's another story in itself, but, but, uh, my mom was praying for me too, you know, because she knew what a, I was out of seven, bo eight boys and three girls. I was probably the, the one that got in trouble the most. So my mom would always pray for me. My mother-in-law was praying. And like I said, something was, something came over me and it wasn't good. It's and, and like, I like to tell people is that I didn't realize at the time that even when a person's in sin, scriptures tell us that in Romans, <laughs> even when a person's in sin, God's hand is still upon you. When, if someone is praying for you, if someone is praying for you, a mother, a brother, sister, father, whatever, if someone is praying for you, God's hand is protecting you. It, you may not seem like it sometimes, but literally I've had somebody pull a gun when I was beating up his friend. He pulled a gun, clicked it three times, and I and it didn't go off, you know? Um, so, I mean, God, and in Vietnam, so God's hand is, is upon you when people are praying for you. And people watch and need to realize that we're praying for you <laughs> and God's hand is upon you. God will touch you or reach you some way. He's trying to learn to yield to him. But getting back to my mother-in-law, you know, I told her that. And like I said, something came over while I was smoking and I couldn't get, excuse me, I couldn't get high. All of a sudden, I just might now. And then all of a sudden guilt, uh, uh, I, a consciousness of guilt and of of of, of uh, depression and uh, suicidal thoughts, and that scared me because I never would think like that. I was always a happy-go-lucky person, but that that then that's those thoughts coming in as I started to get higher. I I couldn't get high. I felt like numb, and, and I tried everything that I that you know playing softball, going to nightclubs, and I, everything that was um that was pleasing to me at, to the flesh at that time to get rid of that feeling and I couldn't, and I, I couldn't eat. It was, I, I had suicidal thoughts, but fear, fear came upon me. And be like, people don't realize that God's hand was upon me, even in the sin, because someone was, my mother was praying for me. 
And then my mother-in-law fasted and prayed for my salvation. And that's when this thing came upon me. But 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 God took his hand and said, oh yeah, when I told my mother-in-law that, when I said, look, Irene, I'm Catholic and I'm never going to be a Christian. Guess who I was telling that to? Not just my mother-in-law. Guess who was in her? Jesus. You don't tell Jesus you're not going to do something because I guarantee you, he'll prove you wrong every Amen. single time. Just like they said, the Titanic, that man that created, made the, designed the Titanic said, not even God, because God said, oh yeah, watch me. <laughs> you know, but, but, you know, I was telling Jesus then, you know, and he took his hand off. He said, okay, a tough guy, let me take my hand off you and let's see how you fare. Well, I didn't fare very well. I lost 35 pounds. I, I couldn't, the only time I got relief from the fear of the suicidal thought, the depression was, and I was never that way. I was always a happy joyful person and having fun with life. But when that, when he took his hand off of me and that demonic spirit came on me, it was tormenting. And I couldn't, I couldn't eat. I lost 35 pounds because I couldn't eat. Uh, I was miserable for a month. I tried to do everything, you know, like I said, to, to, to alleviate that, that feeling. Well, I couldn't. And then after about 30 days of that, of that torment, you know, it was, I went literally, and I don't, and to this day, I don't even know why I went to my mother-in-law's church. It was old Kenny Foreman. I don't know if you're familiar with him. It was his church and, you know, uh, Kenny Foreman's church. And I went, I was broken. I was like really uh, thin. I lost a lot of weight and I, and I was weeping and I, and I knocked on the door and a janitor answered and he goes, and I said, um, he goes, he goes, can I help you? And I said, and I said, I need, I need to talk to a priest. <laughs> I don't know why, and this was, a, and, and he goes, "Well, young man, this is a, this is a Christian church. It's not a Catholic church." I said, and he said, "But the choir pastor, you want to talk to him?" I said, "Anything, anything." And I was weeping, and started talking. He says, "You know what he says? Same thing." My mother goes, "You need Jesus in your life." Well, I, long story short, as I, I said the sinner's prayer, he led me in sinner's prayer, and uh, I, and I still went through that torment. And I got new. God knows what He's doing with us. I it, it's just a never ceases. He, God never ceases to amaze me, because if I'd have got instantly delivered from that, what I was feeling, uh, and, and it was demonic and it was devilish, you know, and, and you know, God God controls everything. He, you know, the devils don't. The devil doesn't control anything. Only controls us people, not God or God's ways or God's things, but us if if we allow Him to do so. But God controls everything, but he, the, the, he, there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 13, I think it is. It says, God will not allow you to be tested or tempted above what you are able to handle. But when, sometimes when you're in the midst of a test or trial, you feel like you can't handle And Boy, did I feel that way. But anyway, I got saved there and, and, I, and for about eight months after that. But, but I did what the pastor told me to do. He says, get yourself into a good Christian church. Get your Bible. Read that Bible. That's the most important thing to you. And I never forgot that. And, of course, that's why I, I love the Word of God because it is transforming. But I never forgot that. And, and, and I read the Bible for the first three months. I read it from cover to cover, but that doesn't mean you know anything. You know, it has to be revealed to you by the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and also through experiences. But, um, like I said, I, I, I didn't... Uh, I was still tormented for about the first eight months, but the whole time, like that seed, like we mentioned in seed, the word of God is compared to a seed in the fourth chapter of Mark, Jesus compared, but it was, it was, that seed was being planted in me through, I was, I was in church or prayer meeting <laughs> six days a week because I was tormented still, you know, and I, and, and I was, you know, God allowed that because if I would have got instantly delivered and felt joyful again, I would have gone right back to doing what I was doing. But God knows how to 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 develop us and yeah. to change us, and He knows us inside out. So for the first eight months, I um, I I I had I just kept in the Word. I kept going to prayer meetings, kept going to church. Literally about five to six days a week, I was in church or a prayer meeting. And uh, thank God He sent somebody alongside another brother that just got saved when I did, just got out of prison, and he got saved genuinely saved and um we were fellowshipping and we learned a lot from each other we learned a lot from the word from different ministries Kenneth Hagan you know and 
And, and you know, so we were learning and growing and the, I was still tormented for the first eight months, you know, when I got saved. And then one day I was sitting there and, and, and I would tell the pastors, I said, you know, I'm still tormented, but I still have suicidal thoughts. I'm still depressed. And then of course the devil was coming and putting thoughts in my mind. I didn't know it at the time, but he was putting thoughts in my mind saying, saying this Christianity is not real. I thought it was me thinking it. The devil's not going to come and say, Albert, this is the devil. This is not real. <laughs> Because of course you're not going to listen to it, but he just like 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 he plants a thought in your mind, and you think it's yourself thinking these thoughts. But he was saying this is not real, this Christianity. So I was fighting that. And I was telling the pastors and and the evangelists and people that were visiting that church, and I said I tell them that, said, I'd go up for prayer, and when I tell them this, they said just just say I resist you in the name of Jesus. So I was doing that, you know, and like I said, it wasn't working. Well, you think it wasn't working. The word of God doesn't return empty to him. But so it wasn't working. It wasn't working because I wasn't believing in the devil's torment, t- attacking my mind with negative thoughts saying it doesn't work. This is not real. But then finally, one day I was watching TV and, and I was, and I was, and I was, I was feeling tormented. <laughs> and I was watching TV and then I got mad. I just said, in the name of Jesus, get off of me with all, you know, with a violent faith. And I, just like I physically felt that thing come on in the beginning, it left. I physically felt it leaving. And it just felt like me always related to me being underwater when I was a kid and go down to the drain, picking up coins, you know, in the, in the public pool and, you know, then staying there too long, coming up, getting when you get up to the top and breathe, that's how, that's how relieved I felt. And it was so, it was, and then reality said, you know, the thought, where it comes to my mind, I said, that really was a devil. <laughs> there really are demons, you know, because the devil was putting thoughts in my mind. I said, there's no such thing as the devil, you know, this and that. And, and I said, there really, that really, there really is a devil. That really was a demon, you know, and, you know, and I, it's reality, you know, but when it, when it left and, and because I said it with a violent faith, well, 10 minutes later, he tried to come back. And I said, oh no, by that time, my faith went from like this big to this big. <laughs> And, you know, by that time, I said, no, you don't get off of me and get out of here in the name of Jesus. Amen. Reality set in, truth set in, and the authority of that word, of God's word in me set in. And, and my authority in Christ, in him, spoke out, and that demon left, and I haven't had any problems with it since. So that's basically how I got saved. And and like I said, um, it's been a joy ever since then. <laughs> um. Albert, you, do you know there there's a reason? I'm, I'm sure you know this. If you don't, I'm going to tell you what uh, what I believe that God permitted you to go through all that because Absolutely. He knew what kind of ministry you would have, and because your ministry has helped set many free. Now I know I get questions asked me sometimes. Uh, Tony, do you think that a Christian can be demon possessed? I say no, but I say you can be oppressed. You can be uh, Mm -hmm. obsessed. Now, when you surrendered your life and became a Bible-believing Christian uh, and born again, that that doesn't mean the enemy runs away. No, No. there are attacks. And I mean, to this day, we still have attacks. Absolutely. But, But the thing is, as we get more of the word of God in us, as mm-hmm. we speak the word of God, we have we have more, uh, it seems, more authority, not mm-hmm. only to help ourselves, but to help others. Hallelujah. You know, I, I remember uh, this happened. I'm trying to remember the year. It must be 15, 20 years ago. I was in England in Manchester, Marge and I, and uh, we were doing an itinerary, uh, up to three meetings a day, different churches. And um, uh, and this one church, it was a Sunday. And I had been in uh, three, I think, three different churches that day, had preached the gospel. I was worn out. I was with my Irish friends there in Manchester, uh, England. And in walked this woman. It was a assistant pastor's wife. 
and here are hat, hat they were, wore a lot of hats still then and it was kind of cocked on it and she looked at kind of a mess and she came in and and she saw me and she says you got to come to our church I said, well, yes, I think you're on our schedule for this week well, on Wednesday night or Tuesday night. No, you got to come right now. And, I, you know, I'm so tired. <laughs> and I was too I was too tired to go upstairs to even go to bed. And uh, um, Marge, uh, uh, she says, you got to come now. I said, why? I said, well, uh, we were giving out tracts or an invitation to the church it was on a Sunday night and uh, to people passing by and this couple came in and the man, this young man, uh, we, we, he was acting up and we brought him back here to the prayer room. And uh, he's been acting like a snake growing on the ground. And he kind of beat up my husband who was assistant pastor. And, uh, and they, they, they were, they have been trying to cast these demons out of him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, it's, it's kind of funny in a way. And said, uh, uh, and, and, and the pastor said, we need help. And, um, and I and my husband said, well, Tony Abrams in town. And this young man who had never heard of Tony Abram, didn't even know the name and said, no, don't bring him. I hate him. You know, don't get him. Well, you know, the de devil knows us. It's not only yeah. the Lord knows it, and especially when we, we kind of interfere with uh, the devil's kingdom by helping mm -hmm. others, delivering others, uh, uh, casting spirits out of uh, people. And you know what? Before I just finish this little illustration or uh, experience, I believe, I don't know about you, uh, Albert, mm -hmm. but I believe like in our mass crusades where we're leading sometimes hundreds of people to the Lord, mm -hmm. I believe that a lot of people that are receiving Christ, mm -hmm. evil spirits are leaving at the same time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And not not everybody, but, you know, there's people with, with, with spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I believe attached to uh, certain things like alcohol, uh, drugs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, these, I believe there's a spirit attached to that. That's what makes that, uh, it's not only a chemical thing, it's mm -hmm. a spiritual thing. Uh, and I, you, you had quit all those things and yet the enemy, he was, he wasn't possessing you, but he uh, was oppressing and uh, attacking you, trying to get you to uh, believe him. Because once we give him an inch, he, he takes a mile if you he can get it, you know. And anyways, with this, I, so I says, uh, all right, I'll come over. Uh, they wanted me over right away. And I remember the, my Irish friend, he said, well, I'm coming too. He, I'm not going to miss this. So he came over there and, and I walked in and this young man was just kind of crawling around on the floor. And uh, I, I looked at him and he, he said, get out of here. And he started to curse. I said, shut up in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then I, I, I pulled up a chair and sat down right beside him. He was laying on the floor. And I said to him, I says, um, uh, you, you're, you're, you're coming out, you, you spirit of hell. And says, no, you have no power. I have the mm -hmm. power. I'm greater than you. I'm greater than your Jesus. And uh, I say, you're a liar. You're a father of liars. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then and he says, you have no power because I lived in Adolf Hitler. I says, ah, oh, you're a liar. Because who knows if he did or didn't? Because <laughs> he's a liar. You know? <laughs> and uh, so anyways, I... I took authority uh, over him in the name of Jesus Christ. And something literally lifted him up. You can believe it or not. Mm -hmm. and, and I know you believe it. And it slammed him against the wall. And he's standing there choking. And I says, and his name was uh, uh, Anthony. The same, mine's, my name is Anthony. Of course, everyone <laughs> calls me Tony. And, and uh, I says, uh, Anthony, I says, uh, if you say, tell 
If you confess Jesus Christ is Lord, you can be set free. Well, to make the story short, he did. And mm -hmm. he, at first he was gasping, Jesus Christ is Lord, Jesus Christ is Lord, Jesus Christ is Lord. And, he, and, and a change came over him. Mm -hmm. Well, to make his story short, that Wednesday he was in a meeting with his twin brother and his mother, and they also confessed Jesus the same. Praise that God. Day. Praise God. So, uh, so we, the enemy wants to keep on attacking, attacking. But like in your case, uh, I, and I believe this, the greater the battle, mm -hmm. the greater the victory. That's mm -hmm. why yeah. you have not only the word of God, but you have a personal experience. Mm -hmm. It's like some like someone could uh, read the Bible to, to a congregation, and there are preachers out there, I'm sorry to say, they went to Bible college or Bible cemetery, and be more likely in some cases. <laughs> and uh, they didn't, they're, they're not going to schools like Ashbury, where there's been revival breaking out here these last couple months and uh, places like they, they, they went to the, well, do you know that all the great universities, I'm sure you know this, they started out as Bible colleges uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they ended up being secular uh, schools that even deny uh, God and they're mm -hmm. more atheistic uh, than any Bible believing. But, but anyways, God, has equipped you, given you the ministry because of the experience you've had. That's what's made your ministry so effective. Do you believe that too? Absolutely. You know, and I believe like what happens is, you know, people forget like in the fourth chapter of Luke that Jesus was led by the spirit to be tempted and tested by the devil, led by the spirit. And, and people forget that. And and he was tempted with suicide. You know, the devil said, throw yourself down. That's suicide. He was tempted with, with lack. You know, the, he was he was fasting 40 days, 40 nights. And, you know, he was tempted with a lot of things. And the, in fact, the scripture tells in Hebrews that he was tempted in all points, as every person is, but without sin. So, I mean, when, when we're tempted and tempted by the enemy or tested by God allows testing in us, it talks about then James chapter one, it talks about first Peter chapter one about counting all joy when you fall in diverse tests of trial because the trial of faith works patience. You learn to wait, patiently wait on the Lord, the Lord's deliverance. And you'll, you'll learn to get, to uh, exercise your authority. You learn who you are as you go through testing and trials. You learn to exercise your authority like I did in that case when I first got saved. I mean, it, it, reality set in. Of I, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. That was reality to me. All of a sudden, because I experienced it and physically felt it, I, I physically felt that demon come on me and leave also at the same physically. So, I mean, I, I, I know what I'm talking about. And, and, and I've ministered to a lot of people of my 45, 40, going on 45 years with the Lord. I've ministered to a lot of people that were demonized and helped some, most of them. And, the, you know, if, if a person, the thing is with a person, if they, they don't want to be delivered. They're not going to get delivered. God gives you a free will. And it's just like, if you don't want to get saved, you're not going to get saved. You have to desire these things. You know, God's not going to force you to get saved. And the devil, and, and if you, and he's not going to force you to get delivered. If you want to be delivered, if you still got a will, you know, but like in the scripture, like in the fifth chapter, of Mark, that, that, that madman from Gadara, that was demonized, you know, he still had, enough of of his of his own consciousness to come and fall at Jesus' feet and Jesus set him free because he wanted to be obviously the man wanted to be free got tired of being demonized controlled by demons see people don't realize that you know in first Thessalonians chapter 5 I think it's verse 19 it says it says that we're I pray that your whole spirit soul and body we're a triune being like God that God created us that way but he says, I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Well, when we, when I, in my case, when I first got saved, my spirit got born again. Col was it uh, Colossians chapter 2, 10? That, that, that it says uh, you are complete in him. 
You know, that verse in, in Colossians 2 says that you are complete in him. Your spiritual man is complete in him. Because we can look in the mirror and we can look at our lives and say, we're not completing him because I'm still thinking this way or acting this way after you get born again. But your spirit, when you genuinely get born again from your heart and accept Jesus, your spirit gets born again and your spirit is complete in Christ. But your mind needs to get renewed. And the scriptures tell us multiple times in the New Testament to renew, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, you know, uh, uh, you know, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, uh, it, there's so many verses in the New Testament about the renewing of the mind because the devil, uh, the devil doesn't have any authority or power over us after you get born again, except if you give him a place in your mind. And Ephesians 4.27 says, give him no place, especially in your mind. So if we, get, if we give the devil a place in our mind, then of course he'll take it. So that's why it's so important to stay in the word of God and the scriptures, to be renewed in your mind by the word of God, be transformed in your mind, not only your mind, but your whole, your whole life <clears throat> by meditating and studying the word of God. And, and people don't realize that after they get born, why am I, they, they think they're supposed to instantaneously be this, this angelic being, <laughs> angelic person, perfect, you know? And I'll point, your spiritual man is that way, but this soul and, of course, this body that we have to bring under submission to the word of God needs, needs to be changed. You know, and that's a process of time. You know, um, our, but our minds need to be renewed by the word of God, how to think, how to act. Um, it just changes you and how to believe, especially how to believe and also how to exercise our faith. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we won't ever do anything for God like you mentioned earlier, you know, share the seed, you know, throw the seed of the word of God everywhere we go, unless our minds are renewed with that word. So, you know, it's, it's people, like I said, people need to re understand that uh, there's a transformation taking place when we first get born again. It's not instantaneously that your thought life is going to change instantly. It has to be renewed. You know, it, it, you stop and think about, you know, uh, from the time you're born, until the time you're born again, the, your mind's being trained. You know, we're being trained by teachers, we're being trained by parents, we're being trained by the world's ways, the world's voice, voices. Um, you know, our minds are being uh, are being manipulated. Our thoughts, life is being manipulated and, our, and we're being trained to act a certain way. Well, that's why when you get born again, well, you know, that's why it's good when you bring up a child in the ways of the Lord, you know, but but when, but if you're not, and then you get, when you come to a point where you're born again, then Paul said that in Romans, he says, I once, he said this in Romans, he said, I once was alive unto God. That means when he was born, when a child is born again, and there's no knowledge of, of sin and sinful ways, you know, a little child is innocent. They're, they're, they're pure, you know, because they don't understand or don't, don't understand or have no knowledge of sin until a point. That's why Paul said that. He says, I once was alive unto God, then sin came. That's why you have bar mitzvahs. That's why you have knowledge comes, you know. Uh, you, I remember when I died spiritually. I literally remember that. I was about 12 years old. And, I, and, I, and, I, and all of a sudden, sinful thoughts started developing. And my understanding of them developed. And I felt real ugly. I didn't understand why. And I remember trying to talk to my mom. And she didn't, she, my mom had no clue about what I was saying. But she didn't know what I was feeling. But I knew it was I was spiritually dying because when I was a child, I was I was loving Jesus, and she, no one ever even told me about Jesus. But I just saw a, a, a picture of Jesus and stuff like that. I just started just I talked in my head dreams when I felt like I was flying with God. So I was talking to God. I was all the way up to about twelve, and then when knowledge of sin came, I spiritually died. That's why Paul says it. He said, "I once was alive unto God, then sin came, and I died." You know, while well, Paul was alive talking there in Romans, so he couldn't be dead now. Then he was talking about that period of time when the, the purity leaves a person and sinful nature takes over. Um, and then we need to be born again. So people don't understand that, but that needs that, but that takes place. That's a process. And then again, then again, 
once you get born again, you, you need to, we need to get our minds renewed according, you know, to, to learn how to, <coughs> to learn how to act as ambassadors for Christ, to learn how to act as Christians and fathers and, you know, everything the Bible teaches us about life. Amen. And do you, do you know that, uh, <laughs> uh, first I, I need to say this for those that are watching, uh, you, 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 you are watching Global Vision uh, Ministries. Walter uh, Zagravich and his wife Nina, they are founders of Global Vision Ministry. And we don't have the sign behind us, but some of you would like to support a ministry that 100% of what you have would give for Ukraine. And, there, and Global Vision is doing a tremendous ministry in in uh in ukraine right now and their their need is great and in different parts of the world and if you'd like to be involved let me give you uh, a mailing address um brother walter will be on tomorrow i'm positive and he will be sharing and probably translating i think tomorrow is in russian and english <laughs> So it's a bilingual, and that it's a good way to uh, uh, to uh, increase your knowledge. It's going to be a great uh, time. We're going to hear some good, great report. But here's a mailing address for Global Vision Ministry. It's Post Office Box, P.O. Box, uh, 5377. And the uh, town or city would be El Dorado Hills, California. Now, if you don't spell El Dorado Hills correctly, uh, <laughs> but uh, if you get the zip right, it's here's the Amen. zip code or the postal code <laughs> 95762. 95762. And uh, we trust that you might uh, please pray. Everyone can pray. Maybe you're in a country that is suffering great poverty. Maybe you don't have it right now, but you can pray. Pray for Walter and Nina Zagrabich and this ministry. And uh, there are wonderful ministries working with them. Uh, I know Albert's ministry is, is backing them. Our ministry, Abundant Life Crusades, is, is backing them. And uh, so are ministries. Uh, in different parts, Marcy Laboki, uh, Dean, uh, 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 Brother Dean is uh, uh, Turner. Yes, thank you, dear. My wife is here. Pray, <laughs> praise on the side uh, for this broadcast. And and uh, there's other ministries, uh, Gyro up for the Bonneville, Alberta Church there, Pentecostal Church. And there's some different brethren. I can't name everyone. They are praying and supporting. But, if, but as we go on, Brother Albert, what I'd like to do, because there are people watching that maybe are oppressed, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, just, maybe not as severe as you were, but uh, at one time, and, but God set you free, called you to this tremendous ministry. Uh, you have a prophetic ministry. You have a pastoral ministry. You've got evangelism and a teacher and so forth. And... Uh, uh, I, what, I, what I'd like to do, I'd like to take you, because I'd like to share this with you, and because my, my strongest ministry is that of an evangelist, and I love doing, doing this, and uh, I know you do too, but I'd like to lead you that are out there. You may say, well, I'm a good, I'm a good Christian. I'm a good Catholic, I, I, but have you been born again? It's not enough just to believe God is somewhere out in the heavens. To help you, he's got to be personal. And how does he get impersonal? By, in, by you inviting him. He says in Revelation 3, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's, and where's that door? Well, I believe it's a heart. Well, we use the heart. It's really the spirit that's with, within us. And, and, and he's knocking at that door, that spiritual door of salvation, and he wants to come in. And you can invite him. The Bible says, to as many as received Christ, to them gave he 
power to become the children of God. And, and, and Paul writes and says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and, and there is no other name given under heaven whereby we might be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to lead you in a simple prayer. And after, after we pray this simple prayer, I want, I want our dear brother Albert Ramirez to pray for you, not only because you started the path of salvation that you're born again, God wipes the slate clean. He forget, forgives, and when he forgives, he forgets your sins. You're born again like a baby uh, that is born. And you heard it, what Brother Albert had just shared about that. You're, the slate is clean, and but you may be oppressed. You may have mm. habits. There are, you may think they're just habits, mm. but the hook really comes from Satan. And he's going to pray for your deliverance. Is that okay, Brother Albert? Amen. Amen. Okay. So for you that will open your hearts, that you've mm -hmm. never been born again, here's your opportunity. Pray this prayer out, out loud, wherever you are. Take the moments. You'll never be sorry. Pray, our Father, which art in heaven. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus shed his blood for the forgiveness of my sins. I believe that Jesus rose again from the dead. And Lord, I ask you to help me. I want to forsake my sins. I want to forsake my past. I want to ask you in Jesus' name to forgive me. I want to repent. I want to turn away. And in the name of Jesus, I want to be set free from the penalty of sins. I want my name written in the book of life because Amen. you paid the price. Thank you, Jesus. I open my heart now. Come in, Lord Jesus. Amen. Write my name in the book of life. And with my, my mouth, I call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I want to be born again. I want to start afresh and anew. In Jesus' name. And then I'm praying for you to talk to God every day. Talk to him like a friend in prayer. Let him talk to you. Get a hold of the Bible. You heard, you heard Brother Albert in Three months, he read the Bible through from cover to cover. I suggest you start with the New Testament, though. Start with maybe the Gospel of John. And third, have Christian fellowship. Get involved in a Bible-believing church where your fellowship can grow. And now, if you've been bound, if you've been bound by things and Brother Albert is going to pray the prayer of deliverance. And he's not going to, you know, that's the difference between a scribe and, and a prophet. A scribe tells you what he, what he has read, but a prophet tells you what he's experienced. And this man has experienced. Brother Albert, pray for these people. Amen. I mean, and again, remember this, that when you get born again, you, you know, it, it, the scripture tells us in John chapter three, verse three, Jesus was telling Nicodemus, Nicodemus recognized the Pharisees knew who Jesus were, was because of, you know, their study of the scriptures. 
So they knew, they, they generally knew that Jesus, well, that's why Nicodemus came. He says, we know that you're a man sent from God because no man can do the things that you're doing unless God is with him. So then they knew that. And then Jesus told him, you must be born again. You must be born again. You know, and that confused them. You know, that religious mind of Nicodemus and other Pharisees, it confused them. But, you know, Jesus said, you cannot see the things of the kingdom of God. He said, you cannot even see the things of the kingdom unless you are born again. The kingdom of God is here. It's not just in heaven. It's here right now. Uh, uh, Luke 17, 21, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. You know, and he was also talking to all of them, but you can't see those things unless God reveals those things to you by the Holy Spirit, by the word of God. You know, um, so we you, you must be born again. When you do that, your spirit gets born again. But this mind that was trained a certain way uh, up to the point where you're at now, where everyone watching where you're at now, uh, maybe you've been born into a family that was, you know, serving God from the beginning. That's still great. But you still need to be born again, you know, because, like I said, there's a lot of influences that are training your mind to think a certain way. And according to the scripture, our mind needs to learn to be transformed and conform to the image of Christ. And, you know, Paul prayed for the Galatians that way. He said, I pray that Christ be formed in you. And if Christ is the living word, then that word is the only thing. The word of God is the only thing that's going to conform us to the word of, to the image of Christ. And, and it's not overnight. It's not an overnight process. It's a daily living and experiencing the life and the power of God's word. And by the Holy Spirit, he's your helper. Boy, you, you don't know, realize how much you need the Holy Spirit to help us. All you got to do is to be the, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the baptizer. If you got born again, you don't need to wait in Jerusalem or anywhere to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. All you got to do is ask him right now to be baptized with the Holy to baptize with the Holy Spirit because he's your teacher, your instructor, your helper. He's also the one that empowers you to give you authority and, and knowledge and wisdom. He comforts you. He uh, he shows you things to come of God from God concerning your life and, and other people, family members, everybody's life. So just receive Jesus and ask him for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you will receive it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You will receive him, the Holy Spirit. So those will be, and he's the only one, I say, he's the one that gives us the authority, the power to cast out devils. And Jesus says in, in Mark 16, 17, in my name, if these signs will follow those who believe, very key word there, believe that in my name you shall cast out devils. So you got to believe. And in the name of Jesus, I do believe that. I've experienced it many times over in ministering to people that were demonized. And we do have authority, Luke 10, 19, over all the power of the devil, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So don't be afraid of the devil. Don't let Hollywood convince you that the devil's stronger than God. No, there's no, not even a... a an inch of comparison because God is far greater and he's in you when you accept Jesus Christ. So you have the power to resist the devil if he comes against you in your mind with thoughts. And, and, and as you get into the scripture, you'll learn to recognize God's thoughts, which apply, which the Holy Spirit will give you through the word. You know, the scriptures, God's thoughts, God's ways. And you'll learn to recognize the, the difference between God's thoughts, your thoughts, and the devil's thoughts. And you'll be able to cast down those, you know, second, second Corinthians 10, 10, 5, you'll be able to cast down those high imaginations the devil puts in your mind and you won't yield to them. And then remember this, this, this is very important, <clears throat> is that, <clears throat> and the scriptures talk about it too, it says in the scriptures, <clears throat> is that if um, a thoughts come to everybody, and no, no matter how long you serve God, the devil could put a thought in there. The difference is knowledge, how much you know of God through his word by the Holy Spirit. Amen. But thoughts will come to every believer. Thoughts don't come to us. Probably, I'm sure, Tony, the devil will try to sneak in a thought there, you know, you know, some about something right, something wrong, obviously, 
or even some something to try to entrap us or whatever. But thoughts come to to all of us, every believer, <clears throat> every sinner. The sinners are controlled by their thoughts and demonic thoughts. But thoughts come to Christians too. And remember this: don't let those bad thoughts bother you. Remember this: if you, uh, the Word of God says, if you don't put it into uh, action by words or physical actions those thoughts die unborn there's no power behind them same thing in the the, the example i like to use is <clears throat> say say there is a, a bank giving away hundred dollar bills to the first hundred people if you don't know about that you have no knowledge of that you can't benefit from it but if you know about it then you can go get a hundred dollar bill you can act on it, right? You can act on it because you know. That's how God's word is. If you know that's that sin, then you won't do it. Excuse me. If the scriptures tell you that, the Holy Spirit tells you that, then you know not to do it. So it's the same thing. You can benefit from it. Good thoughts, too. Good thoughts. If you don't act on good thoughts, like let's say God speaks to you to give Brother Albert's ministry a million dollars. If you don't act on it, it's God's spirit. You don't get benefit. You don't get benefited by it because whenever you give, you're going to be benefited, or and I don't benefit by it for using that money for the ministry. So that's a good thought. And, and you say, "Well, no, I, I'm not going to do that." You, the thought comes, and it's not the devil going to tell you to give to a good ministry, to Walters, to Tony's, to my ministry for the work of God. So if you don't act on that and do it, then it's, then that thought dies unborn. The good thought and the bad thoughts. So remember that when the devil tries to put a bad thought in your mind, don't act on it. Don't speak it, especially don't speak it because that's where death and life and belief in that word causes death or life. So remember that and don't put it in. Don't give life to that negative thought from the devil by speaking it or acting on it. And those thoughts will die unborn. Don't, don't even try to, don't let him stress you out about those negative thoughts either trust me i've been there done that and i'm sure tony has too so we have to learn to trust god we and like i said very important to be baptized with the holy spirit because he's your helper our helper and also to get into the word of god extremely important extremely important can't overemphasize the word and um how important it is in your life uh so just keep growing keep learning and in the name of Jesus, those of you that are tormented right now with the authority of Jesus Christ, all the authority, every knee in heaven, angelic beings on earth, human beings and below the earth, demonic beings, spirits, every knee shall bow to that name. So in the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority and bind every spirit every demonic spirit of oppression, suicide, depression, that spirit of depression, I bind it and I cast it off of you. Those of you that are watching, I bind those lying spirits that are tormenting you with lies of your past. And there's people out there watching. I know they are. I, I, I know that by the spirit right now. Those have been tormenting from your past, being tormented of your past, past mistakes, past things you've done. I don't care if you killed somebody in your past. You got to remember David killed him, had a man killed. He might as well have done it himself. So it's, uh, Moses had a man killed, but yet they were called men after God's heart. So you just repent of that. You just remember that I take authority and you can take authority. You can, the Bible says in James 4, 7, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You can resist doubt and unbelief because that's not from God, that's from the devil. Those thoughts of doubt and unbelief of God those from the devil, you can verbally speak to it and say, I resist you in the name of Jesus. Doubt, unbelief, you know, suicide, depression, whatever it is that's tormenting you, verbally speak against it in the name of Jesus and it will flee from you. That's what God's word says. <clears throat> so in the name of Jesus, I bind every oppressing demonic spirit on those that are watching, cast it out of them. I loosen. These are keys that God gives us. Matthew 16, 19, keys, whatever you bind, whatever you lose, he said, whatever you lose, whatever you bind, that means me, you, you have the authority to do so in Jesus' name. 
So I loosen faith, love, and hope in you. In Jesus' name, I loosen deliverance upon your life. In the name of Jesus, I loosen peace in your mind. In the name of Jesus, and I loosen deliverance in your physical body and your minds from any demonic influence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. And folks, you out there, just raise your hand and say, I am free. I am free because amen. Jesus sets me free. Oh, praise the name amen. of the Lord. Oh, folks, we want to also continue to pray just for a moment because our time, our hour goes by so quickly and plus some minutes. But uh, here in the name of Jesus, we have a stack of requests that that have been coming in from different parts of the world. And we send the word to each one. Amen. God knows. And Lord, you know that we pray not just on the broadcast here, but we're praying continually for these people. And Lord, as they come in, we pray and we keep them until we hear the victory is done. Whether it's in Cuba with that boy, Lord, uh, whether yes, it's with Lana in Ukraine, uh, Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. we send the word. Uh, Lord, move across yes. America, across Canada, <laughs> all across Central America, South yes. America, the islands of the sea, the Caribbean, uh, Lord, yes. the South Jesus. Pacific Jesus. Islands, uh, Lord, China. Japan, Lord, uh, uh, Lord, for Asia, for South, uh, for Africa, for Europe, Lord, uh, around this world, you see each and every one, uh, Lord, touch them, heal them, deliver them, cursed yes. be those cancers, cursed be that the leprosy, cursed be those diseases and attacks, but Lord, thank you for the answer. Thank you for yes. those that are coming to Christ. Thank you for those that have been delivered uh, as Elmer yes. prayed that prayer of faith uh, and of the prayer of deliverance. Uh, we thank you for the yes. victory in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Lord, we pray for Walter and Nina and Global yes. Vision that you will continue to bless and give yes, a Lord, harvest Jesus. of souls, uh, Lord, in Jesus' yes. name, and Jesus. protect them as they travel, Lord, uh, and we'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise yes, Lord, in the Jesus. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, don't forget to continue to pray for Global uh, Vision Ministries, Post Office Box, 5377 El Dorado Hills, California, 95762 Postal Code. And uh, tomorrow, Albert, uh, well, we, we won't be on, but uh, the Walter should be on. And I know that it's going to be a great blessing. And we trust to see you next week. And whether I'm the host or not, I don't believe I'll be the host next week. But uh, anyways, uh, the, the broadcasts continue. And not only uh, here, but uh, it, on YouTube and on these other platforms. And remember to share. You can still hit the share button and the people will get to see it later. Brother Albert, uh, we know what Walter and Nina close with. They close with he, Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Albert, thank you so much. Uh, what you have shared today has been a blessing. And even though we went a little bit longer than our hour, I know I tell Walter sometimes, I said, Walter, you should try to keep it shorter, keep it on. And it's a hard thing to do, especially <laughs> when the anointing of the Lord uh, is flowing. Amen. Uh, would you say amen to that again? Amen. Absolutely. Amen. So we'll be seeing you soon. Now, to, to you that are watching, remember that God loves you and we and we and we love you, but God loves you more. Yeah.